What's up? I'm Alex, the entrepreneur. Today I'm talking to you about how to safely store your JWT token that you use for authentication. So let's talk about the security aspects of this. So first of all, where do you store the JWT? You typically have two options and both of them are unsafe. The cookies and local storage, if set in the front end, if set in a React application in jQuery with JavaScript on the front end, is an unsafe option. You cannot do that. And uh, let me tell you why. And uh, further up in the video, I'm also going to show you what is the way to safely store the JWT token. So let's get started. First of all, why do we use JWT? It's super easy to use. You just put it in, in the headers as a bearer token. It's amazing. It's very widespread. Uh, if you're working with headless CMSs, such as myself, uh, working with Strapi or Sanity.io or Netlify CMS, then you definitely work with a bearer token. And as such, you have to store that token somewhere. And most of the time, you make a request on the front end. So you got to basically adjust to that, which we're going to uh, talk about in a second. So simplest way to store the JWT, which is unsafe, is with local storage. You just get the JWT, and then you local storage dot set, set item. And then any script, and I mean any script that is malicious, can just get that token by typing in local storage dot get item, and then the key in the local storage that has to do with your JWT. So this is completely unsafe. Uh, it should not be done at all. You should never store your JWT in the front end through a request such as this, unless you don't care or are open to the fact that you're going to be uh, putting your users to extreme vulnerability. Now, the second option is to store the token in a cookie, which is very similar. You just get the token, const JWT equals away login, and then you just set the token with cookies.set or any library that you want, or document.cookie.append, whatever. So now you have your document.cookie that is exposing the value of your JWT token, which means that programmatically any script can access your token. And that's something that is uh, potentially harmful because if somebody is able to inject any code that you don't want, then they're going to be able to execute uh, code on behalf of your users. Okay? So the simplest way to store the JWT, again, these two ways, local storage and cookies, are unsafe. The reason why, again, is because any script, malicious script, can access those JWT values. So you don't want to allow that. How do we go about uh, preventing that? Uh, first of all, simple uh, rule. What's the rule? Is just don't expose those values programmatically. Make it so that no script can access them beside the script that you wrote. So how do we do that? First version, which uh, has a lot of cons, and we're going to get actually both solutions have cons compared to the ideal solution of having local storage being uh, script limited. So if only the script that sets the local storage value was limited uh, to accessing the value, then we wouldn't have all of these problems. But since local storage is shared, cookies are shared, we basically don't have a solution. And encrypting doesn't help because we can still access that um, Encrypted key uh, can be accessed by just uh, looking around at the source code, so it doesn't help. So the, the first safe solution would be to use the quote-unquote ephemeral solution, which means that we declare a variable at runtime and we assign that value at runtime so that if we refresh the page, we do lose access to the token, right? We have to log in every single time that we open up our application. This can be acceptable for applications that aren't accessed that much, or that don't really require any refresh, but uh, um, uh, most of the time this will be hell if you're working uh, on a front-end application. You're just going to go nuts. So let's take a look at the code. We just declare the JWT at the top of our script, at the top of the function, and then we just get the, the JWT through a login function that returns the JWT, and then we set that value globally so that any other function can now access it. And uh, um, something similar can be done in React. Let me show you. I'm going to open my code profile front end. This is something that I built in uh, showcasing uh, Strapi in our course. Uh, so if you're interested in that, in that, you can check the complete Strapi course, link in the description. Uh, but that said, we have our user value that comes from the state. And as you can see, if we don't have user, then we show a component called register or login that receives a props called update user that basically allows the, the component to update the user. 
So this is similar to the idea of having a context provider that provides the JWT or the user data in general. And the idea is very simple. We have a component called register or login that uh, would simply just, it's a form and it gets the data and then it makes a request to our API and it gets the JWT token. And once the token is there, if the prop uh, for updating a user is there, then it sends that property back to the parent, okay? Would be similar to storing the JWT token in Redux or in a context, uh, okay? These are all ephemeral solutions. So let's look into a more permanent solution. And there's only one permanent solution that is safe, and we're gonna get there in a second. So the only secure way that is permanent or pseudo-permanent to store a JWT token is to store it in something related to the session. So technically speaking, you could just store it in a session variable, uh, but something more solid will be to store it in a HTTP-only cookie, okay? How do we go about storing it in a HTTP-only cookie? And first of all, what is a HTTP-only cookie? It's just a cookie that cannot be accessed by JavaScript. Any JavaScript application in the front end will not be able to access our cookie. So. Uh, an application that I'll show you later, which is called secure-jwt demo, uh, which we're gonna get it there in a second, will have uh, cookies set, but it will not show them. So, and I'll show you this application in a second, by the way. But let's say I, I use this form, which is basically connected to this application hosted on Heroku. Okay, and then I log in And we're logging in, blah, blah, blah. And now what you see is that I have a bunch of cookies here in my application tab in the browser. But what you'll notice is that they are HTTP only. So you can clearly see the value of my JWT token. I'm quote unquote leaking the value of the JWT token. However, if I open up my console and I type document.cookie, you'll see that it's empty. I do not have access, uh, I do not have programmatic access to the cookie, which means that my front end doesn't know what the value of the JWT token is, even though I can see that it's stored in the front end. Uh, something similar can be done by storing the variable just in a session variable. I decided to implement this with a cookie session. Uh, that's just me. But what we can see with this application is that now that I logged in, I have a button here called ping that shows me uh, what the cookies are set for the request. And you see that inside of a cookie, I have my JWT token. And again, this cookie is HTTP only which means that when I call load secrets, which is basically the, let's call it the protected route, what you'll see is that when I load secrets, I actually get some data back. My API makes the request for me because the API, the backend, has access to the, the token, and then my front end receives the data that I need. So if I try and do the same thing on a different uh, browser, uh, on an incognito application, you'll see that I don't have access to the cookies, and as such, when I try and uh, uh, call load secrets, I actually get nothing, I get a forbidden, okay? While if I try and access this same uh, data from a, a different tab, you'll see that since I have the same cookies because it's the same uh, user agent and it's the same uh, uh, browser, I will still be able to get my secrets back, okay? And this can be done even if I were to close the entire browser because again it's stored by a cookie uh, that, that has an expiration date that is variable. So going back to the discussion, we can store the JWT in a HTTP only cookie. And I'm gonna show you the code in a second, by the way. So what we can do is we can serve the app with a backend server. We, we're gonna have our front end, our front end, our React app or our jQuery app or whatever served via a backend. Okay, it's not just gonna be served as a static file, it needs to be served through a backend so that we do have access to uh, session variables and we can uh, work with HTTP only cookies. And then, uh, as I said, serve front end application with backend server. And then we're gonna mirror the front end routes inside of the server. So if the, uh, if the front end has to make a login request, then the login request from the, from the front end will ping the backend will ping the API, and then the backend that is serving this, the actual backend, will make the real, quote unquote, authenticated request, okay? So your front end, if I go back to the code, which we're gonna explore uh, deeper in a second, but if I wanna give you a couple of examples, if I have my app.js that, that uh, 
allows me to log in, then my app.js will just query my backend slash API slash login with the data, and then my backend will actually perform the real login request to the CMS, to the headless CMS. So that way, I can set my JWT token inside of my session variables, and that means that while my front end has no idea uh, of what the, the bearer token is, so it makes a request that should be authenticated, such as slash API slash secret, and then my backend uh, that stored that JWT will actually use the JWT token as a bearer token in a request that it performs. Okay, and the two requirements for this are that one, you're gonna have a, a matching between the front end routes, such as let's say uh, this one is lo load secrets, slash API slash secret, and then you're gonna have slash API slash secret then actually fetch the data from your uh, CMS and then pass the JWT token. And the other part is that your backend, your express server in this case, but your backend in general, will have to serve your front end so that the front end and the, and the back end are in the same uh, on the same uh, domain, on the same, uh, basically on the same URL. And uh, that's it. As you can see, there is a huge downside to this, and it's simply that you're gonna have to write more code. Every request from the app, from the front end, has to be matched by a corresponding request that is actually the real request that is authenticated and that is done through your backend. Uh, this may also be a fairly uh, good opportunity to build integration tests in the backend. So it, it actually may be a great opportunity to just build pass-through requests in the app and then have uh, real tests in your uh, backend route. So it technically isn't that uh, terrible if you're working with a moderately big project. However, you can clearly see that uh, uh, the unsafe solutions, such as setting cookies in the front end or setting local storage, uh, are very tempting because it takes very little time. So in conclusion, I would advise with uh, developing an application, even by using local storage or cookies in the front end, but then know, know for a fact that you're gonna have to use this pattern in order to secure your JWT token. Any other pattern that doesn't have the JWT values stored in the, in the backend in a way that uh, doesn't allow scripts in the front end to access it is unsafe as of now. And, uh, now being February of 2020, so I would highly recommend that you check this out. Uh, this is something that I'm going to be releasing a tutorial for, so be on the lookout for this. If you like this video, put a like, put a comment to ask me any question you want or even for feedback, and definitely subscribe for more because I'm just getting started. And thank you very much for watching this and have an awesome day.